So what we were presenting today is uh, a set of analysis tools that uh, is overlaid over the Genomics Data Commons, the NCI Genomics Data Commons, which is the place where we store all the data of large genomics projects that, that are done either at the NCI or with NCI funding, and even without NCI funding, but in the States. Uh, that's, that's where the data resides. Um, the problem is that this data is of a really large scale, uh, petabytes in, 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 in size, and so it has become very difficult for your regular researcher to, to use the data unless they are in a large institution. Uh, and being that the projects are funded by federal taxpayer money, we want everybody to be able to access the data. Uh, not only because of how it was paid, also because this data is gathered from samples that patients have given in order for the data to be available. So if we don't make it available, we are basically lying to our donors. Um, and as I said, available by download, it, it, it reaches only a very, very small population. So what we have done is with the overlay of, of Dave, uh, everything has an acronym these days, uh, it's a Data Analysis Visualization and Exploration tool. Um, and so when you go to Dave, you can select the type of tumors that you want to see, you can select the age of the patients, you can select a lot of, of features of the patients, and then look at what the, um, the molecular changes in that tumor are. And then you can start selecting cohorts that you can compare against each other um, and, and say this, this, is, this is something that is done without downloading a single byte. It's something that happens in the website, uh, online, uh, and then when your results are aggregated and finalized, you can download the data. Obviously, this is very useful for researchers, uh, but it's also very useful, I think, for, for patients and patient advocates and, and, and clinicians because if once you have the results of your uh, analysis, you can go to here and, and try to see if you find cases that match your uh, diagnostic. And then you can look at how they responded to therapy and how, uh, you know, the different options that you have. So, so it helps people to understand the information on the tumors and take charge of the treatment. So, it's in the very early stages. Uh, we are just dealing with DNA at this point. Uh, very soon we will get the RNA information and protein is, is following hot in its tail. Um, so we will keep updating it. Uh, and, and one of the things that I always uh, say whenever I do these presentations is I ask people to go and look at it and, and play with it, even if they're not scientists. Uh, it's very easy to use. Um, and then I want them to tell us what is wrong with it. Because if you cannot understand what you can do with the tool, then we did something wrong. It needs to be self-evident. I have this idea that, you know, if you need to read a 500-page user manual to use a tool, the tool is useless. Uh, nobody will do that. And so this, this, is, this is fairly self-explanatory. Um, and so I invite everybody that, that sees this video to go and try to destroy the system, okay, and then tell us all the things that are right or wrong about it. Uh, we like hearing you did a great job, I'm not going to tell you that it's not, but we like hearing more when people say, oh, but it would be great if we could do this or that. And sometimes those things are already in our list of things to do, but many, many, many times we get ideas from, from users that are not experienced users uh, that we go, oh, yeah, right. We, we never thought about that, but it's a good idea. And so, so the, the tool only gets better when we get the input from the users. Originally, when we were setting this up, we were thinking researchers. And so, you know, we, you did the selections of your, of your, of your cohorts, and, and we had Excel spreadsheets that, you know, researchers understand. But then, you know, when we got the first presentations of those, I immediately went, yeah, 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 yeah. But that's only for researchers. And so what we have is you can download the Excel spreadsheets, you can download the files and do the, the work on your own, but when we do the presentations, they're all graphic presentations. So pie charts galore, you know, graphs that go up and down, uh, things that are, my kid, 14 year old, understands perfectly fine. In fact, I use him as my, one of my guinea pigs. <laughs> from time to time I tell him, it's like, okay, get online and, 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 and tell me what you can see. It's, it's actually very easy to understand. Um, 
And if the user does not readily understand it, we have a lot of support material, mostly in the form of uh, YouTube videos. Because again, as I said, 500 page manual, not helping anybody, uh, but we have, um, we have recorded sessions in which we demonstrate how you can use it and what your results mean. And so, you know, if you have any doubts, you can go to the video systems and, and, and then try to learn what, what's happening from that. Uh, most definitely. The, the laws in different countries, each country decides to deal with privacy and privacy is, is the main issue uh, in, in different ways. You know, there are some countries that don't have privacy laws whatsoever. Uh, there are some countries that have privacy laws that cover only health. Uh, the US tends to be that one. Um, European countries have very stringent privacy laws and, and, uh, and none of those models is wrong. It all depends what the country wants to do. But the system needs to operate in the context of going across um, national borders. And because there, there are many places where this data resides. And so uh, we do believe that being able to do the analysis online without downloading the files uh, helps solve the problem of privacy. Because you can go check the, the data, aggregate it basically, make it even more de-identified that it already is because now you have a lot of patients that are reporting together instead of a single one and then you can download the result without ever touching the file to download and so you maintain privacy it solves the issue of crossing borders where where the rules are different if you are doing everything basically in the cloud if you want to to say that um, and then you know you actually never got the file and so that has been uh, one of our guiding principles, basically, and it's the guiding principle of the safe harbor idea. So I, I do believe that this is the way of the future. We are going to be exchanging data more and more without actually exchanging the data, but doing the analysis of the data and then bringing the results back. Because really, if you trust that the data was done correctly, you want to do the analysis. If you don't trust that the data was done correctly, you probably don't want to add it in your analysis anyway. So, you know, you don't really need the file to verify that it was done correctly. Most definitely. There's the, in, in the genomic space, there's the G4, uh, G4GH um, alliance, which is an alliance of, of many, many countries. We are trying to um, decide common standards that everybody should agree on. We are part of uh, G4GH, NCI is one of the founding members, and so we most definitely uh, follow the rules. But uh, the, the interesting thing is when uh, G4GH was put together, um, there were no systems dealing with these large data sets. GDC was probably the first one to, to, to do it, and, and we did it without the guidance being there because it was being discussed. But then after the success of the database, basically it was kind of a feedback loop where we did it thinking of what G4GH would like to see. Uh, and then G4GH saw the database and went, ooh, ooh this is what we want to do. So we are, we are feeding off each other. But in, in, in genomics with, with the, the International Cancer Genomics Consortium and other groups like that, we have been participants since the very beginning. We have been founding members of all those organizations. And, and we do believe that the only way to really, truly understand cancer is to go across national frontiers. So we have to do it in collaborations. What, what a gastric cancer looks in the United States is very different from what a gastric cancer looks in Japan. But that doesn't mean that we cannot learn and apply the lessons learned from one ethnic group to the other. And so it is, it is vital to be able to participate in this, if you want, UN of genomics uh, type of organizations.